part two. So anyway, Mike, what are your thoughts on Christopher Nolan? Well, the first movie I saw by Christopher Nolan was Memento, and ironically, I can't remember it. I've seen his Inception, of course, and then the Batman movies, and I may have seen another Christopher Nolan movie, I don't know. All I know about Christopher Nolan is... How do you do that? But progressively, his movies seem to be louder and bigger. Faster, louder, more intense? Louder, faster, more intense, and... Um, they're like a herd of elephants coming at your face. <laughs> uh, I, I liked Inception a lot. Yeah. There's lots of things I didn't like about it, but um, he, he, it's very polarizing because there's two different, it's like politics, you know, right and left, where it's like you get pulled in one direction. The people that are more um, open to like these, like, wow, the spectacle, I love the spectacle, and I, I uh, it's very emotional. You have a lot of emotional emotions during his movies. The other side is the technical kind of minded people where they're like, that doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Like, and then who might not get the emotional impact. You and I, I think, can balance both of those out in our brains. Yeah. But, but general movie going audiences might be like, wow, that was great. It was so deep and thing. And what? That was a bunch of fucking crap. <laughs> and I, I think that's why he's polarizing because he does have both of those elements in his movies. Yeah. His movies can be kind of clunky and and like, what? Like, yeah. that's stupid. And, and at the same time, you could be like, like mesmerized. I, I think while you're watching his movies, you're just, yeah, f transfixed and you're really in engaged in what's happening because of the the, the visuals and the pacing of it, and especially the scores that he uses, are just this constantly driving music yeah. that gets you pumped and gets you excited. I, 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 was, I was noticing that when we were watching it, and that's, that's a big point to bring up is the music, because these movies probably would not work as well without that score. Some guy sent me a video that he made once where he removed all the music from the ending of E.T. Mm. and replaced all the sound. And it's, it's like, wow, it's just so dry. And yeah. He's walking up the, the, the little ramp. It's like, arr, arr, arr. and there's just wind blowing. and Everyone's just staring. And, and it's so awkward and emotionless and dead. When they say sound is 60%, of the movie, it, there's an expression like that. It's not 50-50, it's, it's more than the image. Yeah. So um, it's super important in the Christopher Nolan movies. And there's, well, there's the editing and the shooting, which is a whole other topic. Yeah, yeah, well, I, this movie, each movie sort of gets more competent as far as the action mm -hmm. uh, shooting and editing goes. Like you look at Batman Begins and it, it's, it's the shaky cam, close up, Lots of shaky cam, quick cutting, mm -hmm. so you're not really sure what you're looking at, but I guess something is happening that's exciting. A little more streamlined in, in The Dark Knight and, and much, much better executed in this one, I yeah. thought. Yeah. And I always get that in these Batman movies, the Christopher Nolan ones, where you're watching it and you're like, where is this person at? Is this person facing this way? Where is this, which direction is this car going in? And um, it's different from like a Michael Bay kind of movie where it's just like craziness, action going on, all the cameras like going round. Because yeah. they're shot more traditionally, but, but at the same time, it, it feels like, and I don't know if this is true or not, it feels like Christopher Nolan's sort of a, a sloppy shooter. He's more of a big picture guy. Like, it's a big movie, everybody. Like Ed Wood. It's not about the <laughs> details, it's about the big picture. Well, speaking of Ed Wood, there's a moment in this movie where it goes from day to night in the matter of like a minute. Oh, really? In the middle of uh, when they're right after the uh, the stock market scene. Oh, yeah. When they are they have that, you know, eight minutes to download this yeah. program or whatever, and they're driving, and it's like eight minutes, seven minutes, and it's daylight out, and then it's down to like five minutes, and all of a sudden it's night. I was like, that's a really bizarre mistake to make in such a yeah. big movie. I always I always visualize the editor in the editing room like pulling their hair out, going <laughs> trying to piece this. I'm trying to make puzzle together. I don't have a yeah. shot of this. Yeah. Because some of the, some of it comes across that way. I'm sure that's not the case. I'm sure, but it comes across that way. Yeah. He turns those big action movies into something very intimate and emotional. So Jay, why do you think everyone on the internet hates Christopher Nolan? 
I, you know, I don't know. I don't pay a lot of attention to it. I try to avoid the extreme negativity because yeah. well, I just don't care. But um, I've heard I've heard the elderly hate him the most. Why would the elderly hate him? I don't know. They just they just fucking hate him. The elderly all get on their message boards and they go to the bingo hall. Hmm. And it, it's the to, uh, all the talk of the town in the bingo hall. Really? They say Christopher Nolan. His movies have so many plot holes. Just everything. He's everything? an overrated hack. Huh? B twenty three. Bingo. It's not a uh, 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 retarded thirteen year olds that that read things on websites and just copy and paste it as their own opinion. They're not the ones that are saying horrible things about him. No, it's the elderly. Okay, that's well, yeah, good to know. I, I don't it's know a good why. frame of reference. They're very angry about Inception. Wow. No, I don't know. I to me, I, I don't see him as a brilliant filmmaker. I don't see him as a genius. I would put him more in the category of a of a J.J. Abrams than I would, uh, you know, someone like Paul Thomas Anderson or David Fincher. Uh, he makes very effective movies, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, Visceral, emotionally effective movies, but they're big and sloppy. But they're but they are big and sloppy. And that's where the plot holes come in. I guess that's why I don't have an issue with him because I don't see his movies as yeah. trying to be intelligent. Like when I saw Inception, as I, I saw it and I was like, you know, that's a a clever twist on the typical sort of heist movie yeah. or thriller movie. And uh, I was actually surprised by how simple it was. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess if you can't keep track of the, the dream and a dream and a dream, maybe it seems intellectual or confusing or too heavy, but I didn't I didn't have any issues with it. And right. I was just like, well, well, that's a clever action movie. Same here. I, I, I got a lot of emails about Inception. People send me emails. I think they're accidentally sent to me. I don't, some, I must have the email address of somebody else. But I get a lot of emails about Inception. They're like, you know, this doesn't make sense. This character shouldn't be there. This, this, this technically, blah, blah, blah. There's so many mistakes and plot holes and inception. And, and, and at, the, at the end, to me, it's like, when I watched it, I had the same reaction as you. I watched it and I, I understood what was happening, but I could see how this didn't make sense here or there. But at the end of the movie, I was like, oh, okay. This is a story about a guy dealing with the death of his wife and how he caused that death. And that's all, it was a little emotional core of the movie. And when a movie has an emotional core, the framework around it isn't as important as a movie that's about the framework of a movie, about a linear narrative story. And every movie should have an emotional core of some kind, but with the Christopher Nolan movies and the Batman movies, they're very, um, they're artistically done, they're emotional, they're uh, poetic, kind of the logic doesn't always make sense but it's more about feelings yeah let's talk about our feelings <laughs> it's more about that yeah and and i'm sure when people watch the dark knight rises like you'll have somebody out there that that will complain about the ending with <laughs> where alfred says earlier in the film i i want to someday be on vacation worry-free and just to run across you with a nice lady enjoying your life. Because Alfred's M.O. in the movie is, uh, I want to see Bruce Wayne lead a normal life. He, he's his caretaker. So at the end of the movie, Alfred does indeed run into Bruce Wayne. And so someone will go, well, how did Alfred know where he was going to be? That's an amazing coincidence. Right. He just happens to be sitting in a seat that's facing Batman when he's facing that way and they happen to see each other like what kind of coincidence is that that's a bl and you're like no it was the the point of the scene was that Alfred got what he wanted in the end yeah and and that was concluded to a satisfactory level uh, to an emotional level it wasn't about the logic of it yeah and and I may sound hypocritical saying stuff like that uh, because I've often complained about the Star Trek movies and the Star Wars movies. You have? I have. But uh, when you watch, uh, let's just say, for example, a Star Trek The Next Generation feature film where it's about the plot. It's very narrative. It's very linear, very basic. Very straightforward. Very straightforward. And it's like, this happens. This happens. That's a type of movie where you can just go, what? That, that, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But with, with something like this, it's done, it, it's about the presentation. 
And uh, it's done in, in this artistic kind of freestyle way where there's this music. And, and it's almost like you can say plot holes are forgivable in certain types of movies like Inception. That's a good example because you're never going to get that movie right. Yeah. But once once you realize what the movie's about at its core, then you can go, okay, that's fine. Well, plot holes and, and nitpicking, that stuff is fun when you're watching a movie that is just rotten to the core. Yeah. If it doesn't have that, that core element of either, uh, yeah, as you said, an emotional core or just a, a really interesting story. I mean, you know, Terminator 2 has plot holes. Right. And that's a great movie. Right. Lots of movies have plot holes. It doesn't make them bad movies. It doesn't make them bad movies. Like Batman, there's another plot hole that someone will point out, or I'm sure someone has. Batman goes away, gets trapped in a prison. Uh, Gotham gets locked down by terrorists, or Bane is the terrorist leader. They blow up all the bridges. You can't get in or out. They have police everywhere. And that's the whole point of the ending is no one can get in or out. And then Batman just shows up, or Bruce Wayne just shows up yeah. without any of his gear or gadgets or planes. Somehow he just walks into the city <laughs> and, and uh, he just appears from the mist. And he's like, I'm here now. That I'm was the back. only moment in the movie where the that element kind of took me out of the movie for a moment. That was the I, I was like, say how that he was back? the biggest plot hole. Yeah. But but the point wasn't how he got back. The point was that he's back. Yeah. And that's the thrust of it. The, he has returned, and he's come back to the city. It's almost like a fairy tale. Yeah. Where he's like. How do Hansel and Gretel really follow all those breadcrumbs? Technically, a bird or would have picked it up, or so the wind would have blown those breadcrumbs. But it, it, that's the, it's the fact that they follow them is the important part. Yeah, and and it's it's all about the presentation, and that will anger lots of people that were saying this. But it's kind of the truth. Certain movies you can you can recognize plot holes because of the logical way they're presented. But if they're presented in a, a kind of a artistic way, more artistic, more poetic way, then it's it's more forgivable. Because this movie is not about the plot. It's not about how Bane wants to blow up the thing. It's it's about the Dark Knight rising. It's about a character like moving on with his life and and uh, uh, kind of overcoming. That that, that was a really great. Um, way to tie everything in a nice bow at the end was the similarities between him falling in the cave oh, yeah. or down the well yeah. and he's looking up and the bats are everywhere and, and, and now Bruce Wayne has to kind of overcome that again and get out once again. A very, very nice way to, um, to tie everything together. But how was he able to climb the rocks? It was for, Christopher wait. Nolan is an overrated hack. Yeah. My mother warned me about getting into cars with strange men. This isn't a car. Well, now that we're done talking about The Dark Knight Rises, you know where we gotta go. Hmm. Taco Bell. No. Well, we made it. Yeah, maybe now we can finally get some answers. <laughs>